Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, revolution. All right. So you, you recently contacted me to do a little writing about revolution. It's a subject that's on your mind. What are your thoughts about it? Do, do we need one? Yeah. Uh, outer, political, inner, spiritual? All of those. <laughs> That's too succinct, isn't it? Because the, 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 the dynamic of the show succinct. must be conversational. <laughs> if I like, think, right, I'm going to just try and answer in binary. <laughs> zero one, one one zero, zero zero one one one. And um, I think that, yeah, and I think they have to be all of them. It's you, in fact, that turned me on to that, our oh, Buckminster Fuller fella. Yeah. And our egos, don't he? That you've got to like look at what the whole thing, the whole reality, the maximum positive impact for the 100% of humanity without ecological damage as soon as possible. So how are we going to do that? I think everyone's got to be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you start off with that. I think start like I suppose what's happened is this is what I believe in, mate, is that certain cultural narratives are promoted that are beneficial only to elites. These cultural narratives are not true. We need to realign the cultural narratives that we promote. So if there are the, the one the only reality that is relevant is we have this planet. There are this many people on the planet. There are these resources. Any system that is in conflict with the even distribution of the resources to the people is a disingenuous and illusory system. All these things are just ideas. America, just an idea. England, just an idea. Karate, just an idea. Wednesday, just an what idea. What about uh, re reptilian overlord aliens? <laughs> Definite real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about the old reptilian overlord aliens. On some level, they are just a sort of a frequency, a vibration like us. And I try not to worry too much about the reptilian overlords because in case they're watching, and I am hoping to get a part-time job in the Illuminati. <laughs> uh, what, what, on the weekends. Once what, what, you see your role with the Illuminati, what kind of work would you like to do with them? I'd basically just like to do massage for the Illuminati. <laughs> Just keep the Illuminati upper echelons relaxed when they're having those conferences with their hoods up. No, I mean, I, I, I think uh, for me, mate, I think that uh, all we have to do is not worry too much about that. That's just iconography and narrative data. The important data is imperceptible to us, as you know, because loads of this stuff I got off of you. I don't know why I'm telling you back again. <laughs> you might as well be talking about my haircut. Like, is that because our sense, the, the realm of the senses is so limited, we can only see between infrared light and ultraviolet light, we can only hear a limited decibel range, we think reality is what we can apportion through the limited instruments of the senses, but reality is of course far beyond that. Spiritual data, is, we don't have the correct instruments to receive it, and we live primarily in the realm of the senses. We live in the I, unevolved I feel like I finally part. got you talking again. <laughs> there you go, I'm off now, man. The one word answers are fucked off, ain't they? Right, so like, uh, we live in it. When you talk about, see, in Christian myth, these ideas are quite evident. When we talk about the, res what, what Campbell said, what, what is the relevance of the resurrection of Christ, some guy 2,000 years ago, if we are not constantly resurrected into the moment, into the moment anew. I think what Christianity is referring to with this resurrection myth is that the dead human ape has fulfilled its potential. The dead human ape has not evolved for the last 10,000 years. These are the achievements of the dead human ape. Now we must, we must uh, transform, become enlightened, right. so that we can access the next realm of consciousness necessary for our evolution. Right, which also involves sharing the resources equitably yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole yeah. setup can partake in the abundance that's available. We've got to sense. let go of temporary transient ideas like individualism. Uh, the, the, the nature of monotheistic faiths, these dead desert religions, is to encode us with the idea that individualism is more important than paganism. Ideologies that integrally relate us to the earth so that we know that we are integrally indefatigably related to our environment and we live in the service of our environment because self is a temporal illusion. So how do we make that uh, jump in, in tangible and practical terms? Well, some people like you just go off to the jungle and eat a bunch of plants. People like me... <laughs> <laughs> people like me have to think. <laughs> I have to use the old nut. What we think we know about our world is always changing. <laughs> now, you can join some of the greatest minds on the planet. 13.7 billion years into the history of the cosmos, how do we end up with this weird stuff called consciousness? What the hell is it? And share in the ideas that are shaping our future. We have an obligation for the evolution of our species to continue to pioneer. This is the country of the pioneer. We have the truth you are seeking. This is very much part of the mainstream now, and it's not going to go away. On Gaian TV. Well, this is fun for me. I get to introduce two extremely extraordinary uh, human beings to each other. 
Uh, Eve, meet Russell. Russell, meet Hi. Eve. Hello! Hello. <laughs> so happy yeah. to meet you. I'm happy to meet you. She no, was so really? nice and kind and a bit sexy. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Thanks. <laughs> so, so, so we were talking beforehand about kind of, uh, well, cultural programming, which we kind of discussed a little bit. And uh, yeah, and, and how kind of in a way we could use cultural engineering to bring about kind of a transformation, which I guess you've been doing. Maybe you want to tell Russell a little bit about your perspective on that. Well, I like what you were talking about, getting out of the individualism thing and the consumerism thing and beginning to see ourselves as artists at the creators of our destiny. I think, I think so much of what is, is happening is, is the creating of this passive culture where people are just staring up at a screen or being just consuming and, and, and transacting as opposed to seeing themselves as transformers of their own destiny. And I, I just really am interested now in all the ways we create energetic shifts in helping people become transformers of the world. And so we are, not, and I love what you were saying about being nice. Like how do we generate kindness? How do we generate images of kindness and the possibility of kindness? You know, so much, so much of the culture that exists is about perpetrating cynical ideas of who human beings are, you know, particularly television. Yeah, it is. Because I see that Darwin, uh, origin of species, survival of the fittest and all that, and social Darwinism, those ideas that were leapt upon a century ago, in that actual book, Origin of Species, he was kept going, but most animals, they're a lovely, cuddly bunch, exactly. and they're always being nice to each other. They f that bit off. Oh, it, wasn't a convenient it, was the, message. it was the bulk of the book. The, the survival of the species was only a tiny little bit of the book, you know? So, so they just look for information that's convenient, conveys a, conveniently conveys a pre-existing narrative, then bombard us with that narrative till we can't think nothing else. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what if nice. we just started saying that people... I, another Terence McKenna thing, he says this really interesting thing about the fall, right? That the whole idea of the fall, that people are fallen. Who, who made that up? Maybe we're rising. Maybe we're not fallen. But that just keeps everybody in their place believing they're fallen people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think if we actually um, kind of pulled out from that thinking and saw just really reframed who we are and reconceived who we are, like actually we're rising people, not fallen people, mm -hmm. that we can create. And I love what you said about the evolution of the next consciousness, that we're just here to push up to the next, to the next place that we need to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>